Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and this is Holly. Uh, Holly is frequently uh, on the Sunday videos uh, where I answer gardening questions. Uh, you can ask gardening questions down below this video and I will pick from them for next week, but hold off on doing that because I also have a big giveaway at the end of this video that you might want to hear before you start uh, making comments down below uh, the video. Uh, the, again, the questions I'm answering this week were from uh, last week's. I never get to all of them. There are I skipped a while doing these question and answer videos, and since I've come back with it, there are a ton of questions. And so um, uh, I realize I'm not getting to a very big percentage of them, uh, but uh, typically as time goes on, they, the questions start to slow down again, and I'll end up getting to most of them. Uh, there was a giveaway from last week as well for a pair of snips, and the, um, I used that random comment picker, and the winner, winner for that is Charlotte Lighton. You can send me uh, an email to this email address with your home address and I will mail those out to you. Uh, the person that won from last week's giveaway, I have not mailed out yet. I'm mailing them on Monday or Tuesday. I already let them know that, but um, I was out of town this whole past week. I went up to uh, Delaware, uh, Wilmington, Delaware, to a garden center meeting um, uh, that was super interesting. It was garden centers from uh, all over the United States, uh, independent garden centers, um, uh, comparing notes and, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the, the future of garden, the garden, independent garden center business. And then we uh, toured uh, up into uh, Pennsylvania to some really nice garden centers and uh, nurseries and over to Longwood. But uh, I, I like to take these opportunities to get on the road when I can with some folks that, um, uh, you know, I can learn from and hopefully help. I, I hopefully I can help them as well. But, um, um, I, you know, I learn a lot from from folks from all over the country. So. Uh, that was, had an interesting week uh, doing that. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, again, stick around to the end of this video because this giveaway for this week is uh, fantastic and includes a soil test uh, to three different winners. And I've got a good soil test question uh, coming up in this uh, from last week's questions. So let's get started on the uh, questions from last week. Somebody wants to uh, move a dappled willow and wanted to know if they should cut it. They can cut it back a little bit uh, when they move it because they're worried about it starting some new growth. I talked about that in the uh, September video about pruning this time of year, being careful not to uh, be pruning. I was mostly talking about evergreen things because evergreen things uh, are the ones that tend, would probably restart growing. I think the dappled willow, um, the, a deciduous plant, I think would be fine. You could probably get away with doing a little pruning on a non-flowering deciduous plant um, as, as you move it without any problem. Uh, those uh, I grew that Hakira Nishiki dappled willow at my nursery for years and years. It's a tough plant regardless. It's just kind of a tough plant. Uh, it was interesting because that plant, frequently I would uh, not get great numbers propagating that plant and through my initial growing of them until I had them in trade gallon pots. Once they were in a bigger pot and had some roots on them, they're like weeds. Uh, but initially that plant um, um, is not that fun for a nurseryman, weirdly. Um, okay, so... Okay, so here's the question about uh, from the soil test. Somebody has uh, somebody got a soil test back, and their phosphorus is off the charts, like 125, uh, and they uh, uh, <laughs> get very concerned about it. First of all, it, anytime I ever did soil test in um, whatever part of this business I've been in, from my nursery where we had to do uh, all kinds of testing. Um, uh, leach testing, where we test the water that runs out of the bottom of the pot, or um, uh, soil testing when I had my had my landscape company. Uh, if I got something that was really off the charts, really seemed like a wacky number, I would do a second soil test. And so that was something I would recommend if you get something that's just way off the charts. Assume that you dug something up in the yard that um, was unique to just that particular spot uh, and do that first. Um, and then, you know, if it comes back again and says your phosphorus is 125, then you know it's a real thing or somewhere that's super high. It won't be 125 again, but it'll be, if it's still ridiculously high, um, then that would be, a, then obviously you have, you have this issue. Uh, phosphorus is weirdly a rare element. Despite it being one of the main um, uh, big three nutrients in, a, in fertilizer, we get nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You see the three numbers on your fertilizer, that middle number is phosphorus. Um, 
Phosphorus is a fairly rare element um, on the planet. And um, a lot of what our plants do is struggle um, in a relationship with a fungi in the ground to get phosphorus for themselves. Uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting, uh, really. Uh, I was down in Gainesville in uh, February in Florida and the phosphorus mines are, you know, are, cl are close by uh, in that area where um, there are deposits of phosphorus. But on the rest of, most of the rest of the planet, it's fairly, fairly rare, um, uh, but plants need it. Um, it's one of the, like I say, it's one of the main things uh, that, that, that they use. The, one of the other interesting things about phosphorus, um, unfortunately for this person, it is very stable in the soil. Most, most nutrients, if, like if you test nitrogen one week, um, if you test it three weeks later, it's going to be different. It gets used by the plants it's, it, or it gets leached from the soil. It actually moves around and changes uh, where phosphorus is very stable. So if you have super high phosphorus problem like this, it's probably going to be around for a little while. Uh, what, what high phosphorus would do, you say, well, how can you have too much of something? How would that be a problem? Uh, phosphorus, high phosphorus can actually lock up, um, I think, iron and zinc. Um, so you can get so even if you have adequate iron in your soil, even if your pH is correct for the iron to be used in the soil, if you have a, a super elevated phosphorus, uh, it won't be available to the plants. It just sit there, but it's not it's there, but it's not available. Same thing with zinc, uh, and that can produce uh, issues in the leaves. Uh, you know, iron deficiencies are very unique um, uh, in plants, and very easy to see a lot of times. So get light yellow growth on the tops of the plants. Um, you can compensate by spraying those things with a foliar spray potentially um, for iron and zinc, zinc issues. If you were having those issues and you had the super high phosphorus, um, unfortunately with this high phosphorus issue, there's not a lot you can do about it other than time. Um, phosphorus tends to form into rock phosphate and becomes more stable in the soil. That can take three, four, five years probably for this uh, to correct itself some. How did it get there in the first place? I don't know. Unless you live near a phosphorus mine, I have no idea. Uh, it must have been someone applied manure um, over and over and over again. Manures tend to be, um, you know, have quite a bit of phosphorus in them. So be careful with manure, you know, not to apply it and apply it and apply it. Apply it's okay. I didn't say don't apply. You can't use manure um, as fertilizer or mulch or whatever you want to use it for, but be careful applying it over and over and over again. And it's the same thing with. Um, um, inorganic applications of phosphorus, so like triple superphosphate or something like that. Um, be careful with it. Um, like I say, it's stable in the soil, so add a little bit at the time. Uh, don't go crazy, ever go crazy with that stuff, because if you add it beyond what what is necessary, then it just sticks around for a long time. So unfortunately, this person's issue, if it is an issue, um, again, get a second soil test. Um, it's just going to be around for a while. If you did, uh, most of the plants that are going to be susceptible to that iron and uh, zinc issue are going to be shallow rooted things. You may see that your annuals underperform in that um, situation, you know, for a few years in that situation because the roots are very shallow along the top of the soil. The deeper rooted plants probably will have a much easier time dealing with that excess phosphorus issue. And now I've confused lots of people. Um, so there you go. Um, Somebody asked about, um, this is another interesting one. This is, conversation, this is from a conversation I had this week, actually. They're in zone 9B in Florida, a uh, little high shade, um, and want to know what to plant in that area. You know, camellias are definitely a zone 9, um, uh, that sunshine ligustrum. Those were two things that they had kind of suggested that they would like to use. So sunshine ligustrum is, sunshine ligustrum will be fine. It's like zone 6 to 10. Uh, the camellias in 9B, in Florida, you're right on the edge of where they're going to get. They do need a little bit of cold, and so um, uh, unless you, it, I would look around your area and see if uh, you know camellias are doing well. And if they are, then yes, that's a good. That's a good spot. You have a good spot for it, a bright area that's in the shade. Um, but you need to look around your area. This was a conversation I had. Uh, during the week with a garden center who was in nine, zone 9B in Florida. And a lot, a lot of the things that are listed for zone 9 just don't grow um, after 9A. They grow up to not, you know, 9A, and then when you reach 9B in Florida, those things just don't perform well. This is the issue. Um, the issue with zone 9 all over the country, because in California, zone 9 can be an area that um, 
uh, is fairly temperate. And you know, um, when we're talking about zone nine, we're only talking about the cold. We're not talking about the heat, okay? We're talking about how cold it gets in the winter. So this same spot in California, this same spot in Texas, and the same spot in Central Florida or South Florida can get the same winter temperatures, but in the summer be vastly, vastly different. You know, Southern Florida tends to have a cap on the temperatures. It doesn't actually get, um, normally it clouds over. Same thing with Mobile, Alabama. It just clouds over when it reaches 90, 91, 92. Whereas in Texas, zone 9B, there's probably no cap on, on a full sun, sunny day in Texas in July. Uh, and, uh, you know, temperatures of 110. And in California, it might be completely temperate, you know, with it being 80, you know, um, in the low 80s or something like that. So uh, zone 9 is a tricky, uh, a tricky animal. And, I, and when, you, when you're looking on a plant tag and something says, zone five to nine zone four to nine you're in you're in nine <laughs> okay i would say that you probably need to be looking around your area and see if you're seeing that plant um so uh, start start taking a look at the plant tags as you know, maybe it'll grow here and uh, go to local gardens um, go to garden centers in your area you know see what neighbors who have nice landscapes are doing i really do think you need to look around uh, and don't just trust a plant tag because that plant tag saying zone nine literally might be talking about somewhere on the Pacific coast uh, where, you know, the temperatures just don't get that high. Um, uh, or, or, or could be talking about um, something that's a, a xeric plant that like super low moisture <laughs> where we, like, we would work great in Texas or California, but not necessarily in South Florida. So I just think it's a tricky place just in general, when, it, when you go from 9A to 9B, it is radically, radically different. It's one of the, you know, it takes a big giant jump um, and, and plants change in that zone uh, everywhere in the country. So um, again, I think an exploration of your area is the best call for seeing what's doing well in those part shade and shade conditions. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Somebody asked me if I ask, answer old questions, and yes, I do. If I don't have you know, enough questions to get quickly, I will go back to old videos. Um, again, though, I'm getting so many right now that um, uh, I don't know when that will be, so you may want to re-ask it. And I'm still, like, again, I, I, you know, sorry I can't get to um, all of them, but it's between 100 questions a week or more. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, so somebody had lots of rain. They've had lots of rainfall in the Northeast. I said someone had lots of rainfall in the Northeast. Everyone's had lots of rainfall in the Northeast that lives in the Northeast because we've seen several. All, every tropical storm, for whatever reason, is making its way up there, plus whatever rains they were getting. And wanted to know if it was going to have any long term effects on newly planted things that they've had that are still looking good right now. If they're still looking good right now, they're fine. But this is what I talk about, about mounding plants up. If, you, if you're in an area that gets rainfall or has the potential to really get a lot of rainfall, uh, you do want to make sure your plants are mounded up a little bit when you plant them. It may require a little more watering um, initially uh, to make sure that, to, to establish those plants. But you, you always want to be set up where heavy rainfalls or extended amounts of rain, extended time of rain isn't going to kill your plants. Remember, you cannot, um, you can't fix overwatering. You can fix underwatering. You know, I mean, if you see something's wilting, you can water it. If you see, you, you know, you flooded around your plants, you can't do anything about that. So uh, keep that in mind. Do mound them up just a little bit. If they're looking fine, they're probably just fine. That you know, you would have already seen issues if you were going to have issues uh, from it. But if you live in an area that gets heavy rainfall and the soil doesn't drain particularly well then uh, mound them up a little bit. Those of you who are in sandier spaces in Eastern North Carolina or East um, South Carolina or Georgia or Florida, you can probably plant them a little more flush even though you get a lot of rain just because that sand drains so well. So, you know, making adjustments for where you live. If you live um, in areas that are um, very dry, you know, plant them flush. Um, but again, I live in an area where we could potentially, especially right now in September and October, you know, get a tropical storm followed by a hurricane and end up with 20, you know, 20 plus inches of rain over the course of a month. It's happened. It ha and it happens every, every 10 years or so. 
and uh, so my plants are sitting up just a bit um, to make sure that um, they don't die from that okay uh, let's see um, uh, let's see somebody want to know about relo if they could relocate blueberries this fall yes um, absolutely um, you can uh, uh, very easily move blueberries uh, blueberry plants are easy um, getting them to fruit is not necessarily always easy uh, they're kind of picky about soil and uh, you know having a low pH and iron present and all those kinds of things but the plants the plants themselves are very very hardy it's one of the few things I never covered in the nursery no matter how cold it got those pots could stay frozen all winter long it seemed like it just didn't hurt them at all never hurt them seemed to encourage them uh, if any if anything uh, but so yeah in in the fall um, then no problem at all moving blueberries and that goes to another question about somebody asked me about pruning uh, blueberries uh, in zone 7b wanted to know when and how the how I can't really I mean I, I don't have an example of pruning a blueberry to show you today but I will tell you when when is in late winter before they start to leaf out you can actually see the the buds on the plant at that time that are going to be berries and uh, there's a lot of good videos on pruning blueberries and that's what I would encourage you to do um, is to do a little bit of a deep dive on pruning uh, blueberries but one of the reasons two reasons we do it in late winter before they leaf out um, one is like I say you can see the buds you can see where you're going to have berries at that time and the other is um, you typically lose some stems and some wood on blueberries during the winter time so by then you'll be able to also identify the dead parts of the plant uh, to clean out so that's when you do it um, late winter as the buds swell but before they uh, leaf out and again I would find uh, some uh, somebody I'm sure has a good demonstration uh, pruning uh, blueberry videos that you can watch at that time okay um, somebody has some old uh, liriope um, and there's some ivy and stuff mixed in it they moved into a house they like the liriope variegated and green liriope it's blooming now um, bees pollinators like it uh, but they wanted to know it's but the the ripey's got a lot of old foliage down in the middle of it and that kind of thing and then it's got some ivy down below it uh, the the ripey actually needs to be pruned hard about the same time you would prune those blueberries late winter before they put on new growth um, you can hit them you can even hit them with a weed eater you can just weed them right off um, and that will give you the fresh growth next year fresher flowers the plants will look a whole lot better you can fertilize them at that time you can mulch them at that time you know just clean the whole area up and in the process of pruning it down that ivy should be much easier to uh, hopefully remove um, and then again you can mulch it and, and get everything cleaned up but you could do it all at the same time but I, again I think the process of cutting that liriope down really really short will give you the opportunity to clean up uh, the rest of that space again it's a late it's a late winter thing okay last question before I get to the uh, giveaway um, uh, somebody asked oh somebody asked about digging up a crepe myrtle sucker so their neighbors had crepe myrtles they've had a few suckers come up root suckers come up on their side of the line uh, they're about two years old now and they wanted to know if they could dig them up and move them yes but I tell you what I would do is I would cut it away from the parent plant uh, before you do it so you could go out there with a shovel and put a circle just cut a circle around the plant just take your shovel and stick it directly in the ground break every root on it maybe a foot circle out from the middle of the plant so a two foot wide circle is what you're going to end up with um, around that plant and just cut it away from the parent plant and then leave it there uh, you know maybe up until March or so of next year and just let it that, that's how I used that's how I've honestly that's how I transplant a lot of things especially old established plants I'll, I'll basically cut I'll cut the roots um, several times and allow them to uh, sit in that spot and grow out some new roots in that in that center spot uh, and then and then move them so that's what I would do with a root sucker is cut it away from the parent plant but leave it in place and then give it a few months and then move it so uh, there you go so let's talk about uh, let's talk about this giveaway so here are the snips I meant to carry over to the chair I left them on these uh, I left them on the snap uh, on the steps here but there are snips uh, that uh, Charlotte uh, will be receiving after she sends me her uh, her her, um, her address okay so super excited uh, plantsmymail.com has um, uh, soil test kits um, kind of goes with the theme of this uh, question and answer here actually uh, 
and they're giving away three of those uh, soil test kits and three $50 gift cards. So three winners are going to get a soil test kit and a $50 gift card. Um, I saw on the uh, plantsbymail.com uh, website that Touch of Gold Holly is available. Um, it's one of the um, people have asked me about uh, where to find that uh, Senecio, uh, the, uh, uh, that skyscraper Senecio, the blue, uh, that blue chalk plant that I showed at, um, in a video uh, last week before last at, uh, down in Mobile, that beautiful blue plant, which most of you, that's a tropical, so most of you, if you were ordering it off of there right now, you would, um, you would probably keep it as a house plant through the winter, but then it can go out uh, in the summer. Super cool, just a super cool, unique uh, plant. They also have, I saw that Sterling Moon uh, Begonia, uh, which I've planted out here in my front yard. It's a Zone 7 hardy Begonia. I'm super excited about that plant. Beautiful flowers on it uh, as well. I showed it in one of the tour videos uh, recently. So those were some things I saw on plantsbymail.com that are interesting right this minute. Uh, so, okay, the way to enter for these three, um, for these three giveaways. Make a comment down below this video. It doesn't matter what the comment is. It can be a gardening question, which I will pick from for next week. Um, and that will enter you for one opportunity. A second opportunity to win, you go over to Instagram and go to the um, HortTube Instagram, my Instagram, and uh, I will put up some sort of um, a photo with that soil test kit on it today. And you make a comment down below that for a chance to win. And follow me over there on Instagram as well. I, I, a lot of the, a lot of the things I'll do that I don't show on the YouTube channel, um, I show over on Instagram. Then go over to the Plants by Mail Instagram account, follow them over there, and uh, make a comment below the same photo that I'm putting on my Instagram today. So those will be the three chances to win next Sunday. Um, I will use the random comment picker on all three and uh, select the three winners. I'm pretty excited about this giveaway. It'll give you a chance to take a look at your soil test. Maybe the winners can send uh, me a copy of the soil test and maybe we can um, um, dive into those a little bit in a question and answer. So thank you guys for following along and uh, I'll be back next Sunday with one of these uh, Q&As. Thanks again.